welcome to shankar ais academy it's a great opportunity and a very proud moment for us today for all of us today so shankar ais academy feels very proud uh, in felicitating mr vinay uh, sunil patel all india rank 122 with agricultural optional thank you so much for uh, mr vinay for being so kind and uh, giving us this opportunity to hear more insights from him and i have to thank uh, our mentor mr kanagraj sir for arranging this interactive session for all of you each one of you i am expecting uh, the same kind of uh, success uh, in all your life all the very best for all your endeavors i will uh, over to mr kanagraj sir to communicate with you from there we'll have great insights from mr vinay thank you all Hi everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Kanagaraj, Faculty for Agriculture. Today is a very special day. Uh, we have our students, uh, Mr. Vinay Sunil Patil, who secured All India Rank 122 in the CSC 2023 with the Agri Optional. I should have been present there, but unfortunately, my early morning flight to Delhi was cancelled, so I couldn't make it. Uh, tomorrow i'll be there in delhi uh, i am sorry vinay uh, i should have been there uh, to welcome you personally because uh, you have made us all proud and you are one of the greatest inspiration for uh, those students again in this field especially from the students from maharashtra and the students with the agri optional i extend my heartfelt uh, congratulations to you and uh, my sincere thanks to you to accept this session in a short period of time um and the students uh, i hope this session will be very useful for you um so feel free to ask any doubts to mr uh, vinay he will be very happy to share all his inputs and uh, uh, his strategies uh, thank you vinay once again now uh, please go ahead and uh, share your inputs so i will give a brief background about myself uh, i am vinay patil coming from uh, nashik district of maharashtra Uh, this was my third attempt at uh, upsc csc i had completed bsc agriculture from nashik itself from 2016 to 2020 uh, during graduation i had that idea that uh, i will be preparing for uh, civil services so uh, my seniors told me that if you focus on your graduation well uh, your optional part will be taken care of so during graduation uh, i had this idea that whichever course uh, i was enrolled in uh, bsc agriculture uh, i used to see uh, what kind of syllabus uh, will be coming from that course so whatever i could i tried to um, may prepare myself uh, during graduation but uh, many areas were left unaddressed even during graduation so uh, in 2020 i graduated and the covid 19 uh, pandemic uh, had struck so rather than coming to delhi for preparation i decided to um, opt for uh, online coaching for gs and uh, for optional part uh, it was difficult for me uh, to go for coaching uh, so because uh, i had prepared some topics and i was not prepared uh, with the rest of the topics so i joined only the gs coaching uh, initially and then i failed in prelims in 2021 and 2022 so uh, i felt back to back prelims and it was a difficult time during pandemic the preparation was uh, really challenging and some obstructions used to come so but i kept preparing for optional as much as i can and uh, in my uh, second prelims when i felt it uh, i had a complete 12 months in front of me to prepare everything holistically i discussed with my seniors and they told me that uh, you should uh, prepare uh, for optional again and uh, our plan was to uh, keep uh, preparing for mains till december i failed uh, second prelims in around june so our plan was to prepare for mains till december so uh, i started uh, with paper 2 uh, initially and uh, the plan was to give 3 to 4 months again to agriculture and make as much notes as possible uh, so 
uh, I kept preparing GS uh, simultaneously. So the plan was to uh, prepare optional in the morning session and then read newspaper in the afternoon and then uh, do GS in the evening. So in this way, in the morning session, uh, I had my optional prepared by around October or something uh, in that period. And then I dedicated some time to uh, essay ethics. So in my morning session, my essay ethics and optional around 1000 marks were taken care of uh, till December only. And in uh, Ms. Res, uh, one, GS123, I had my notes ready for GS2. So till then, I did not wrote uh, any paper or uh, answer writing part. Then in January, I started preparing for a prelims. Uh, yeah, this, was, this time, we gave around four to five months for pre prelims because I was failing at it um, continuously. Means I failed two consecutive attempts in prelims. So my seniors initially, when I started preparing for prelims, they told me the mantra that Sam Dam Dandabet, whatever you do, you just clear the prelims. Because uh, prelims is a tricky game. Even those who are getting rank may fail in next prelims. So we dedicated uh, more time to it. Uh, I think uh, around two months uh, before uh, the prelims exam, uh, three months actually, uh, uh, we lost our uh, grandfather. Uh, so I lost one to uh, um, one to two months uh, in that uh, time because uh, he was ill for uh, two to three weeks. And then uh, when he died, we lost valuable uh, time. And uh, he was not just a grandfather to me, but was like a father figure. So I started when I started preparing again for prelims, only I think around two months uh, were there to start again. So in that two months, I did whatever I can for the prelims part. And uh, this year's prelims, the prelims that I cleared, it was all about clearing CSET. Uh, whoever cleared CSET, generally they mostly uh, they cleared prelims because uh, the CSET was the deciding factor. And the cutoff was around 75 marks only in GS. So when I cleared prelims, uh, means uh, most of the optional notes were ready, especially in paper one, my notes were ready. And in paper two, half notes were ready. In the later part of the paper two, I did not add much uh, notes. And you know, talking about answer writing, uh, I wrote my first full length paper of, um, of entire preparation after I cleared prelims. So uh, right now, uh, I will not advise you to do the same because uh, uh, means my understanding is that you should write something in around November or December. And uh, nothing can substitute writing full length paper, even in essay, even in GS, and even in optional. Uh, means you may write one or two answer or single essay from PYQ, but uh, writing full length paper is uh, something different that cannot be manage from any uh, different thing. So I would advise you to complete uh, means first thing is to understand the concept and make notes. The second is a revision of those notes. And then third is to reproduce that content. And are you able to reproduce it in the given time? And if you are confident about it, then you should write answers in November and December uh, full length test. So uh, I started writing after I cleared prelims and uh, first of all, I discussed about uh, which test series to join in because I had not uh, been part of any coaching or optional. So uh, people uh, suggested me to uh, contact Kanak Rajan sir and I enrolled in his test series. I wrote a few tests uh, there. Also, I uh, after writing the test, I used to discuss it with sir and whatever suggestions uh, he used to give me that uh, what was the missing part, which diagram is to be included, uh, where the explanation is needed, where examples are needed. And uh, in the very beginning, he told me that I don't give more marks in test. So if you are scoring X marks, uh, consider that in the actual mains, you will get around 15 to 20 marks more than that. And this thing actually happened. I used to get 115 to 120 marks in uh, optional test that I write right here. And in actual exam, I got around uh, 130 to 35 marks. So uh, means I just want to say the accuracy that uh, he initially told me that was reflected in the actual paper also. Uh, I will uh, address some of the common doubts in agriculture uh, optional. Uh, first of all, uh, 
if we have to differentiate between paper one and paper two, uh, paper two is a, a very technical in nature. Uh, most of the most of us will feel the pain, will feel the many issues in paper two because technical concepts are there, and we have to understand each concept and then write about its application. We have to add examples. Also, the later part of paper two, horticulture, entomology, pathology, food security part. All these parts uh, took a lot of efforts mm, for preparation, but uh, the rewarding part is only paper two. It is very difficult to score in paper one because um, paper one is easy to prepare but difficult to score. And in paper two, uh, it is dif difficult to prepare comparatively, but uh, scoring is uh, relatively better. Then uh, means um, our uh, one of the advantage with agriculture optional is that it is very scientific, uh, technical, and conceptual in nature. So if you are thorough with the concepts and uh, you are able to reproduce that content, then answer writing is not a very uh, big uh, deciding factor in agriculture optional, in, uh, especially if you are you have just started preparing. Because uh, my seniors told me this thing that what's the main uh, uh, formula in agriculture optional it is simply that whether uh, what you have made notes of is it available on your fingertip that if you are asked this question and how much time you are taking to reproduce uh, what is there in your notes and your answers will be reflection of your notes so if you have revised them well and you are able to reproduce that content means you have uh, three to four examples of something in your notes and you are able to reproduce hardly reproduce one example then it's not going to work but there are if there are five examples and you are able to reproduce even three then uh, it is fine so the answer writing part or paper completion part will be taken care of later but main thing is uh, whether you are able to reproduce the content and if you take too much time in reproducing that content then you will feel problem in completion of paper so how much time you are taking for thinking and uh, uh, structuring that answer and all, uh, it will decide whether you are able to complete the paper or what kind of quality you are going to write. So thinking and content production is very important part. And another problem is uh, to remember the factual uh, things. In paper one as well as paper two, there are a uh, number of factual things, but um, my experience here is that you have to be smart with them. Uh, you have to club, uh, for example, there is a question on crops cultivation. Then there you have to first develop a visual memory of how that crop looks at various stages of its growth. And then you have to uh, see uh, what uh, in general points you can write. There are some general points, especially in soil climate uh, of uh, that cultivation part. And there are some specific uh, points. For example, if varieties are asked, you cannot uh, write uh, any variety if you don't know it the specifically the name of the variety. But if you are, are asked about the propagation or about the sowing depth or about the seed rate, then you can think about it and write some generalized point there, which will not be uh, very incorrect, but it is close to be correct. So you have to differentiate in these uh, two things. Also, there are some uh, parts which you have to memorize for example scientific name for example uh, some government scheme part is there uh, some examples of a thing are asked uh, for example in paper one weed science is there so uh, the name of the weed the type of weed it is the scientific name of that so there you have to uh, do that exercise but you have to differentiate the generalized aspect and the specific uh, aspect and then address the two accordingly then uh, one important, uh, another important thing is to make notes. Uh, generally, if uh, candidates are having the time, I advise them to go for their own notes because whatever notes you make, uh, you means uh, I just uh, understood uh, one thing recently that um, whoever makes uh, own notes, uh, their revision part is uh, taken care of and it is easy to revise our own notes. Then uh, it is, um, to revise uh, others' notes or uh, uh, to revise the ready-made content from material that we are reading. So uh, if you uh, do your efforts at note-making, your efforts at revision will be saved. And if you 
find shortcuts uh, to those efforts, then your efforts at revision will be manifold. Then, uh, the uh, talking about uh, further talking about note making, um, if you just uh, write the name of the topic uh, and then write PYQs uh, under that heading, uh, name of the topic and address, you have to make notes that will address the all the demand of the, those PYQs. And uh, also I would advise to look at forest PYQs also uh, because uh, some questions are getting difficult and uh, if they have to make the paper difficult, they will uh, see the forest PYQs. So don't uh, lose sight of that also. Then uh, if you are not uh, finding uh, sources for some topics, uh, there are some sources that uh, first of all, you have to Google it. Then uh, in Google, you will find many sources. Then uh, AI related uh, things are out. Then you can look for some digital library uh, thing is coming up. So you can look at uh, some uh, re standard reference books from there. You can also refer to previous uh, year topper notes uh, for that topic. Uh, for making your own notes. So uh, I, I don't think that uh, sources uh, is now a very big problem uh, in agriculture. Also, uh, degree notes, uh, those who are, have been, those who have done BSc agriculture, they are familiar with them, but those who are not, uh, you can refer to uh, some degree notes from some reputed universities. Uh, the degree notes are, means for example, in BSc agriculture, there is a complete course on weed science. So for six months, we are studying that. And here, uh, from those notes, we can take out whatever uh, our requirement of optional is. So uh, it's a very uh, short part of that complete course, but uh, we have to extract uh, whatever requirement we have for that topic. And uh, there are two types of uh, topics. Uh, first, uh, some topics are very detailed and in depth. So, for example, as I said, cultivation practices, pest disease, uh, uh, cultivation in uh, horticulture as well as agronomic crops. So, it will take time and there you can refer to some uh, ready-made notes. For example, pest disease and cultivation part. But there are some topics which are very uh, straightforward, like uh, in agronomy and in soil science, there are some conceptual topics. So, there you uh, should go for notes because if you uh, just read the standard reference book. The problem with them is that they are not uh, written from UPSC point of view. They are written from MCQ exams of, uh, for example, ICAR entrance exams. Uh, so they are comparatively uh, more in depth. So if you don't make notes, uh, reading them is fine. But if you don't make notes from them, then the revision, uh, when it comes to revision, you will have to revise the entire book again. So uh, my suggestion would be, even if you read the standard book, do make uh, notes out of it so that you don't have to visit that book again. Our requirement of optional is very different compared to the purpose for which the book is written. Then, uh, you know, when you revise the, your notes for the second time or the third time, there uh, you should look for some uh, value addition part and uh, see whether you are able to bring any diagram or flowchart uh, in that thing. So uh, use, use of diagram flowchart is all about how much space uh, you are, uh, how much space is available with you. If you are having more space, then you should uh, explain that thing. But uh, if you are, if you have less space, for example, many subparts are there for that question, then you should uh, go for a diagram or flowchart. In value addition, we have a diagram, uh, facts, figures. Uh, some quotes can be added in paper one. A study can be written and uh, government schemes are there. Government scheme, for example, some master schemes can be taken. Like uh, there's a scheme called Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana, and it covers many uh, aspects of uh, agriculture syllabus. So in conclusion part, you can uh, write in paper one that this uh, thing is a and then it will lead to uh, this, this, this. So uh, some themes are also running. For example, uh, uh, latest uh, thing that is introduced is Atmanirbar Krishi. So wherever uh, we have to write from policy perspective, you must mention that uh, we are shifting towards Atmanirbar Krishi and how that thing is going to help. So, so in soil questions, you can write about soil health card. Earlier, there was a thing uh, regularly in news about the 
doubling farmers income but right now uh, it is not that much uh, discussed because the timeline uh, has crossed its limit also see uh, whether in niti ayog's report or uh, any statement that the honorable prime minister has made uh, whether is there any mention about uh, that thing so this is the way to make uh, paper one uh, a bit dynamic because it is very difficult to write uh, bring the variation compared to others in paper one also there are, there are magazines in which current affairs are going on uh, from that you can give uh, a bit dynamic uh, aspect to paper one in paper one in environment and ecology you can refer to gs content and whatever happening there to write bring that dynamic point uh, in those answers then in soil and agronomy uh, there are continuously running some government schemes are running for example uh, in fertilizer application uh, nano fertilizers are coming up in fertilizer application uh, drone drone technology is coming up robotics is coming up so in that way you can give some reference to that for example Now audible, na? So right now I am having a 2023 mains paper with me. Uh, in this paper, I choose uh, questions. Uh, in paper one, the question of uh, FPO was asked, and uh, in FPO question, uh, I knew that I am going to write a case study uh, which was in our region. Uh, so i choose that question because i could have uh, some dynamic aspect on that question then in also uh, the another question of that was about uh, self help group women self help group so uh, in that year in the 15th august speech honorable prime minister has discussed about uh, drone didi concept where uh, drones will be given to women self help group in rural areas and they will uh, those drones will be used to spray nano urea in uh, in their respective regions so i knew that this is going to be a master theme in writing because uh, i can write it in women self help group i can write it in uh, drone technology and i can write it in uh, nano urea question so this was a wide application theme so whatever happening around that time you have to uh, take care of these things that uh, somewhere and somehow we have to bring that dynamic aspect in paper one also in uh, weed management question there is a weed institute and that uh, weed institute uh, means i am not able to recall the institute's name but that institute um, uh, in on its website uh, gives routine update about uh, what's happening in weed management and what's a new thing coming up for example if any biotechnological uh, invention is going on or nanotechnological or uh, what kind of new uh, technologies coming up in uh, chemical weed management or herbicide so if you write uh, those kind of examples uh, even in biological weed management they are doing some experiments so by mentioning that institute's name that they have given this thing or they are working on this thing you can bring that uh, one mark or two mark extra point uh, in your answers and somehow from uh, through these things we have to make paper one dynamic and fetch those 10 to 15 extra marks in paper 1 also uh, the in for maharashtra candidates or those coming from marathi background they have a newspaper called agro one uh, agro one's uh, uh, translated version in english is also available it is a daily newspaper uh, whose subscription is also not that costly and it covers uh, agriculture related current affairs on a daily basis so i found it uh, very useful also the um, dd durdarshan channel has some themes going on related to agriculture current affairs uh, gs knowledge will help kurukshetra magazine is there which is which covers some aspects related to uh, rural uh, situations or the rural current affairs so in uh, through these things uh, you can uh, make some uh, bring some dynamic aspects in writing also case studies case study is one of the best thing that i have found uh, if you have to 
make that point understand. For example, in our region, there is a Sayadri FPO, and uh, in collective efforts, uh, mostly uh, aspirants used to write about the Amul example, which is very popular. But uh, rather than writing about Amul example, I wrote about the Sayadri FPO in our region, uh, which is uh, which was back then uh, number one in terms of export in Asia. So I wrote uh, various facts uh, related to that and presented it in the form of a case study. Then, uh, as I just said, uh, figures, examples, and bring uh, uniqueness to your answers. Then, um, two uh, YouTube channels, I would say. Uh, first is about Amit Bhatnagar, sir. Uh, I would highly recommend that YouTube channel for concepts. He do not teach from for uh, UPSC or agriculture optional point, but uh, he teaches for uh, in general for agriculture candidates. But the concepts, especially in soil science and agriculture, you will uh, enjoy his uh, videos on YouTube. And for paper two, RS Rajput sir's uh, video uh, for uh, initial part are very good uh, if you are lacking in concepts. Uh, in uh, current affairs, uh, there is a good scope to make a dynamic, especially in environment, extension, and economics. Then uh, for package of practices, uh, my, I would advise you that uh, if the crop is re regularly coming in PYQs, for example, if you take fruits, then mango, pomegranate, uh, such type of uh, crops. Then if you take cereals, rice, wheat, maize, pigeon pea, and if you take pulses, oil seeds. So if we take uh, four to five crops from every heading and do those crops well, it is highly likely that uh, from that crop only uh, cultivation part will be asked. And if a rare crop or not so popular crop gets asked, just understand that uh, you think that it is difficult for you to write on this, but most of the those who are writing uh, that paper, they will also find it difficult to write because uh, all of us are, um, overall we are doing almost the same preparation. So if it is difficult for us, it is difficult uh, for all. And the examiner is go going to understand that that uh, in this question, the quality of answers is not coming of that quality. So we just, uh, if something like that, if that kind of question is to be addressed, uh, just understand that don't leave that question completely blank and don't fake things. Because uh, if you write uh, something completely fake there, uh, the examiner will not uh, like this dishonesty. So uh, write generalized points there. So. Uh, your impression uh, will be uh, maintained in the rest of the paper that uh, the examiner will be checking. So try to attempt uh, such questions. And uh, in terms of question selection, uh, first of all, uh, if uh, you are going to write mains or uh, you will be writing it next year, uh, give five to 10 minutes and do this exercise very well that uh, the selection of questions, it is a very uh, important thing and uh, many uh, potential candidates have made major blunders in question selection uh, in previous years. So first of all, see what kind of pattern is there. Uh, a question is for 50 marks, but sometimes uh, 15, 15, 20, these three questions are asked and sometimes 20, 20, 10 markers. Means what pattern is asked, how many marks each question is having, uh, check that. They also check uh, how many pages are there for 20 markers because of, on that basis, you will be managing the space and the content to be presented. And give five to 10 good minutes uh, to select the questions. Uh, don't select all questions from same section. Uh, this may uh, look that um, I'm uh, suggesting you simple things, but uh, previously uh, many uh, candidates have made this mistake. So you have to select two questions from one section and one question from another section. So in selection of question, first of all, um, my understanding is that uh, if you are well prepared on most of the topics of the syllabus and you have good notes and revise them well, you have uh, more choices in question selection. Because, but if you have left some topics and uh, one or two questions are there from that topic in the same question, then you have to completely leave that option. Then your choices are reduced. So prepare all the topics in required depth so that you have more number of choices. 
and those who are having a good number of choices uh, then uh, you start looking for how many sub parts are there in that question and for 20 markers if there are 3 to 4 sub parts then you should select that question and uh, if 220 markers are good for you and 110 marker is uh, looking difficult or not that good you should select that question rather than compromising with a 20 marker uh, quality so uh, first give priority to 20 markers or uh, those who are having uh, those questions which are higher marked and then see uh, how many sub parts are there and if there is a technical question where concept is asked and you are very uh, thorough with that concept and you can write diagram or flowchart or case study in that question then select that question but uh, if that question is asking for very generalized knowledge uh, then uh, i think it will be difficult to score uh, good marks there you will write good uh, content you will complete that question but scoring will be difficult so see if you can uh, select that kind of question for example uh, this is a paper from last year and in which uh, the cell membrane molecular models were asked and uh, models given by a singer uh, uh, these uh, three things were asked and enlisting was asked so around four to five things were asked but i don't know these models uh, as they were not from pyqs so i had to completely leave this question because it was for 20 marks so uh, the point is simply that if you have prepared well, your chance choices uh, there increases. Also, uh, in last year's paper, in one question, uh, two uh, means cultivations uh, were asked: uh, guava cultivation and uh, integrated pest management. In uh, pomegranate was asked. So as I was not um, much prepared on that uh, theme, I had to uh, leave that question. So in paper one, I had to choose the extension and economics questions. And in paper two, I had to choose the horticulture and food security questions. And uh, I was prepared more on in paper one in agronomy and soil science and in paper two, uh, breeding and genetics. But I had to choose a uh, question from extension economics and horticulture and food security. So uh, this was the challenge I faced, although I got uh, fairly well marks, but uh, this issue can happen with you. So prepare uh, all topics uh, well, so that choices are more. And uh, since I have talked about current affairs, if you are just starting ag with agriculture optional, uh, if you are from agriculture background, then you will be familiar with most of the things. So your target will should be to directly go for uh, studying that topic and making notes and then uh, later you will revise those notes but if you are from non-agri background uh, you should be clear with the optional selection that you have chosen then uh, you should give ample amount of time to understand the concepts in detail if you are from non-agri background you should not compare yourself with those from agri background and then uh, check yourself uh, give some time uh, build on basics and try to uh, take some ready-made notes for some of the topic because you will not be having that much uh, that much time uh, for each and every topic and you may opt for coaching if you are from non-agri background because uh, some things uh, will be taken care of and another uh, uh, issue with uh, agriculture optional candidates is about uh, clearing prelims uh, i have faced this issue and uh, uh, many um, of my uh, friends that I meet, they are facing issue in clearing prelims. And um, the importance of this thing is that we uh, choose agriculture or we say that uh, we are uh, in agriculture, strong in agriculture. But uh, if we don't clear prelims, we will not get the chance to write that agriculture optional. And then that advantage is of no use for us. So uh, if you are routinely failing prelims, give more time to prelims and see uh, who from our background is clearing prelims. Uh, this uh, year, for the third attempt, I refer to Shubham Pawar sir's strategy for, agri uh, for agriculture as well as for clearing prelims because he is from similar uh, agriculture background as ours. 
and uh, so i thought that uh, we will uh, stand on same footing and he was clearing prelims or he has been clearing prelims since last 3 uh, to 4 year with a 15 to 20 marks margin coming from agriculture background so i uh, referred to his strategy for prelims and uh, you should also uh, look at uh, his uh, telegram uh, and youtube channel for uh, prelims strategy because uh, coming from similar background it will help you uh, that's it uh, from my end for uh, um, agriculture optional preparation i i think uh, uh, you must be preparing for uh, next year's uh, uh, mains or um, i don't expect anybody to be writing this mains 2024 uh, coming year but uh, if is there any uh, i will talk to him first and then uh, we can discuss uh, your doubts about uh, optional preparation uh in uh, before uh, the time gap between uh, prelims and mains if you are now ready with your uh, notes uh, then uh, you can uh, give your time to revision and then start writing text uh, tests um, as i said uh, you can write test in november december or after clearing prelims so that's it from my side about the time gap between uh, prelims and mains and uh, one more point that uh, i have met some aspirants after result who have scored good marks in agriculture uh, in mains but uh, they did not uh, got good marks in rest of the papers for example in essay ethics and in rest uh, gs papers so even if we have the optional uh, optionals advantage with us but it will be of no use in getting rank if we don't score well in gs papers so don't compromise any paper even prelims even csat even gs uh, essay ethics uh, to prepare uh, optional you have to maintain that balance with you so uh, that's it from my side uh, you can 